Welcome to the learning module of making manual reusable face mask. After placing the cloth on the table, an inch tape is used to measure the width and height of the mask piece. The width of 10 inches is marked on the cloth for bottom and the top side. A line is drawn from top to bottom for easy cutting. Now for the height. A point is marked on the line at 8 inches. Similarly, the same height is marked on the other side of the cloth. These two points are joined by a line. Coming to the beading, it is 1.25 inches in width and 5 inches in height. A point is made using inch tape and lines are drawn. Two beadings are needed. Hence, another piece is marked on top of it and lines are drawn. Using a scissor, the side beading portion is cut first. It is first cut as a single piece. Then they are split into two beading pieces. After cutting out the two beadings, the mark, mask portion is cut with scissor. Now we have the mask cloth and the beadings ready. The tying string of 10 millimeters with cotton tape is placed on the table and cut. The length of the string is 16 inches. Using the first string, we cut four similar tying strings for a single mask. All the four strings are cut. One point from the top is marked at 2 inches on the face mask cloth. Another point is marked 2 inches from the bottom. This procedure is repeated at the other side of the cloth. Now a point is marked 2 centimeters from the top point. Another point at a distance of 2 cm. In this way, we get a total of 4 points on one side and another 4 points on the other side. So now we have totally 6 points on one side. On one edge of the cloth, it is folded by 1 cm and pressed with a hot iron. The same edge is again folded by 1 cm and pressed with hot iron. Similarly, the other side of the edge is folded at 1 cm width and pressed with a hot iron. The same edge is once again folded by 1 cm and pressed with hot iron. Now we come to the pleat formation. The topmost marking on both sides of the cloth are picked and it is then placed on the second mark and folded. It is then pressed with a hot iron. The second fold, the third points on both ends of the cloth are picked and placed on the fourth point. It is then folded and pressed with a hot iron. For the third fold, the fifth points on both ends of the cloth are picked 
placed on the sixth point, folded and pressed with a hot iron. All the pleats are folded neatly for fabrication. Take a small sewing needle available at home and use suitable thread. Inserting the needle at one end of the folded part of the mask cloth, it is stitched to form a knot. The knot keeps the stitch in place. The stitch is logged. The sewing needle is inserted and stitched using a running stitch method. While starting to stitch and at the time of finishing, it is essential that the stitches are locked. The running stitch must be done carefully to avoid needle pricking the fingers. Use the other hand to hold the cloth firmly to have control over the stitching. At the time of stitching, it should be stretched periodically to ensure that wrinkles are avoided. At the end, the stitch is knotted and the cut threads are cut. The same procedure is repeated on the other side. Before starting to stitch, it is logged firmly and using the running stitch method, the stitching is done on this end too. Here again, one should be careful while stitching. Periodic stitching of the cloth will ensure that there are no wrinkles. The other hand should hold the cloth firmly for good quality stitching. Care should be once again taken to see that the needle doesn't prick the fingers. At the end of the stitching, the stitch is locked properly. Now we have to make the pleats. After pleating the cloths, The two of the tying strings are placed on the two corners and stitched. This stitch ensures that the pleats stay in place during further stitching. Before beginning the stitch, the stitch is logged properly. It is essential now the string is stitched this ensures that the string is firmly stitched and locked at the end of the stitching Now that one side is finished, we go to the other side. Here again, the remaining two strings are placed on the edges using running stitch method, it is stitched. 
after locking it properly this keeps the pleats in place at the end it is locked properly so that the stitch doesn't give away now all the four strings are attached and the edges are trimmed properly one of the side beading is folded on the edge and stitched the beading is stitched using the needle in running stitch method the top edge is folded for neat look by doing this way the tying string is also tightly attached twice now the excess edge is folded before folding the beading at the end of the stitching a lock stitch is enforced now the beading is turned over to the reverse side here the beading is double folded on the reverse side so that the frayed edges are covered the beading is double folded and stitched using the running stitch method at the end of the beading stitch it is locked properly with a lock stitch since one side of a beading is stitched we go to the other side beading just as the previous one the beading piece is placed on the edge and stitched along with the tying string and pleats this ensures double protection to the tying strings as well as the pleats just as the other beading this beading piece is also double folded over the reverse side lock stitch is essential before starting to stitch the same running stitch is used to stitch the beading on this side too
at the end the stitch is locked properly now the four tying strings are knotted at the ends this will ensure that the edges do not get frayed after knotting all the four strings the mask is ready loose threads are cut and edges are trimmed for good neat appearance of the mask the mask is now ready